What's going on you guys? Welcome back. So for today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how I got this long wearing, sweat proof, waterproof, transfer proof makeup look. Well, I hope it's all of those things. I actually just got done finished filming this look and I'm gonna show you guys the products I use and towards the very end of the video, I will be showing you guys a wear test and showing you guys how well this held up throughout the day. So I hope you guys really love today's video and if you love it, of course, stop what you're doing and press that subscribe button. It's completely free and while you're at it, give it a big old like and also click that bell so that way you guys don't miss uploads from me. With that, let's zoom in and let's get started on the look. Let's go. So I'm first and foremost gonna start off with a little bit of moisturizer. I feel like it's important to really moisturize your skin whenever you're going for a long wearing, foolproof, and just full coverage look. So I'm gonna go in with the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enrich Face Base. You guys know this is like my jam. Holy grail, holy cow, I'm using quite a bit of it. Honestly, this is very pricey, so I'm glad I'm getting through it. Don't you guys hate it when you buy expensive products and then they just like don't work out for you or you forget about them? Well, this definitely is not one of those products for me because I literally use it every single day. So I'm gonna put this all over. All right, so now that that's done, I am gonna go in with a little bit of the e.l.f. Dew Primer. This is one of my holy grails. It is a spot on dupe for the Milk Hydro Grip Face Primer. And I do like to put this all over. I like to think of it as like glue for your skin. It's incredible. Definitely check it out if you guys haven't already because I do want my makeup to really stay in place and I really want it to stay in place on my nose. I am gonna go in with the Too Faced Primed and Poreless. This is a pore banishing and blurring face primer. It is going to leave your skin extremely matte, so I definitely recommend only applying this in the areas where you feel like you need it. This definitely isn't a primer I would put all over. Again, I'm only gonna focus it in the areas where I want my makeup to really stay in place, like my nose. I'm gonna press it into place. I'm also gonna focus a little bit right here. You guys know I'm hella extra, so I do like to double prime, but if you're not into double priming, skip it. But I definitely feel like this step really helps my makeup stay in place. Before I move on and do anything else with my face, I am gonna go in with some of the Derma Blend Loose Setting Powder. This one is in Translucent, and it says it's formulated with a weightless micro nice powder that locks in makeup to ensure smudge resistant and enhances wearability for up to 16 hours of consistent color wear. So I'm gonna take whatever I have on the back of the cap. I'm gonna take the Sephora Pro Contour number 79 and just swirl it into the product. And then I'm only gonna take this powder Powder and powder down my nose exactly where I put the Too Faced primer. As you guys know, whenever you wear a mask, your nose makeup is the first place to go. So powdering down a mattifying primer is really gonna help your makeup stay on for a long period of time. And again, I'm just focusing it on my nose. Mm. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Let's actually move on to the brows because I have not done my brows yet. I do have a new brow product that I really wanna try. This is called the Micro Ink Pen. It is a brow stylist by L'Oreal. And I'm gonna swatch it on the back of my hand. It's meant to give you mm, micro bladed brows. So I'm gonna take this and see what it's all about. But first I'm going to take a spoolie and I'm just gonna comb through my brows. By the way, I'm getting my brows laminated on Friday, actually today when you guys are watching this. So I'm super excited. Hopefully they come out good. Fingers crossed. Ooh, okay, that's actually really pretty. I will say my brow hairs look a little, a little warm. I do like for them to be a little bit more on the cooler side, but I am getting that micro bladed brow feel. Is it as neat as like a brow marker? No, but I'm still getting that same effect. So I can definitely say brow product isn't my favorite. Probably wouldn't recommend it. I'll definitely have to stay on the hunt for a brow marker, brow pen, something that's gonna give me the appearance of like feathered boy brows and let you guys know what I come up with because that is not it. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the P. Louise Base 2 and I'm actually gonna use this to carve out underneath my brows and also use this to prime my eyelids to help my eyeshadow stay in place. 
So for eyeshadow today, I will be using that eyeshadow palette I showed you guys in my last haul, which is the Escape Artist Palette by NYX. I was literally blown away by the overall pigmentation of this palette when I swatched it. So I knew it was a no-brainer to use it in today's video. So the first shade I'm gonna start off with is this peachy shade right up here in the top row. And I'm gonna take that on an M441 and I'm just gonna use this as my transitional shade. Now, because I'm doing more of like a long wearing makeup look, I don't want the eyes to be too, too crazy in today's video. I definitely want to utilize this palette a little bit more. So I'll probably do a video over on Instagram TV, but for the sake of today's video, I'm not really gonna go too crazy with the eyes. The next shade I'm gonna pick up is in the second row. It's this shade right here. And I'm gonna take it on that same brush and really start to pack it on right here in the outer V. It's just a little bit deeper than that transitional shade. And I'm only gonna focus this in the outer V area of the eye. Ooh, I'm really loving how this eyeshadow is blending. This definitely is gonna be more of a warm tone look. So if you're not really into orange undertones, then you may not really like this that much. But sometimes I'm into it, sometimes I'm not. I think that the color story is really beautiful within this palette, so that's why I'm using it. The next shade I'm gonna take is in the third row. It's really gonna neutralize the color. It's a little bit deeper, and I'm gonna take it like on an M507, M506, whatever you have, and I'm gonna start feathering it in the outer V. I was actually expecting this to be a little bit more darker and deeper than what it's showing up as, but it's okay. I'm really gonna take my time and build this color up. Then I'm gonna take a fluffy brush and just buff and blow it out. Let's move on to our lid shade. I'm gonna take the champagne shade in the first row right here. I'm gonna spray my brush with a little bit of fixing mist. You can use whatever you want, MAC Fix Plus, the Prime and Fine Dewy Glow Fixing Spray by Catrice, and then just put this all over the lid. <gasps> that is stunning, wow, so gorgeous. Now I'm not gonna worry about getting the lines too perfect just because I am gonna go in with a liquid eyeshadow here in a second. I'm just laying this down just so that way it blends in with the matte eyeshadow. Cause sometimes I feel like it's a little hard to blend matte eyeshadow in with like a liquid eyeshadow. So I do like to take this step just to ensure that everything blends. Now I'm gonna go in with that liquid eyeshadow. This is by L'Oreal. This is the Brilliant Eyes liquid eyeshadow here in the shade Crystal Shine. It's so beautiful. It actually kind of mimics what I already have going on, but this is going to make that lid shade extremely long wearing. You guys know how I like to work with liquid shadows or creams in general. I like to put a little bit on the back of my hand and then with that same brush, I'm just going to pat it directly over top and also use it to really like cut that crease area. Oh my God. Do you guys see this eye versus this eye over here? Like that liquid eyeshadow really took it to the next level and it is so freaking gorgeous. Holy moly. Wow. Now you guys know liquid liner is kind of like a hit or miss for me, but I'm definitely gonna go all out and do a black liquid liner. But first I'm gonna go in with my safety measure. I'm gonna take a dark brown eyeliner on an angled brush and I'm just gonna start tracing out exactly where I want my wing liner to be because it makes it that much easier for me to get it right the first time around. As much as I wanna keep the brown liner, I've been doing brown liner in almost every single one of my videos. So I am gonna switch it up. I'm gonna go in with the black liner here. This is from Revolution. This is called the liner revolution and it claims to be waterproof it's also a felt tip liner so i'm just going to trace directly over top to see how it goes one thing i will say about this liner is that it is a little dry like i'm having a hard time just like getting it on i don't know i don't know what's happening here Instead, I'm gonna be using this by Too Faced. This is the Better Than Sex Easy Glide Waterproof Liquid Liner, and this is more of like a brush tip liner. I'm hoping this works a million times better. Okay, all right, that's what I like to see. When I tell you going in with shadow liner will literally elevate the game for you. I used to struggle with liner so bad up until I started doing that little trick with shadow liner and then tracing over it with black. Like my liner has never looked this good ever. Anyways, let's move on to lashes. I will be using these by Ardell. These are the Ardell Wispies. They have become my new favorite everyday pair of lashes. And then I'm gonna go in with a little bit of individual lashes just to elevate the outer V a little bit. So I'm gonna do that and then I'll come right back. 
Now that my lashes are on, I'm gonna go in with some mascara. I'm gonna use the Urban Decay Perversion Waterproof Mascara. I actually really love this. I always wear this whenever I go to the gym, just so that way I don't look half dead. But I'm gonna coat my lashes in with the false lashes, just so that way they appear to be a little bit more natural. I also like to go in with my lash curler and pinch my lashes in with the falsies. I got this from Revlon and it literally is the best lash curler I've ever used. If I can find it online, I'll definitely link it for you guys down below. Now let's move on with the rest of the face. The last thing I did was primed and then I set my nose with a little bit of that translucent powder. Now I'm gonna go in with the LA Girl Pro Concealer. This one is in peach. You guys know I literally cannot skip this step. It's literally a step I have to do in every single one of my videos. So I'm gonna take some on the back of my hand just because I do have some active breakouts and I'm just going to pat with my brush and conceal all of these blemishes because Lord knows I need to. I'm now gonna take an extra step since I do have some active breakouts and I'm gonna go in with this concealer. This is an acne treatment concealer by Sephora Collection. I did a campaign with them a couple weeks back over on my Instagram and I've been loving this concealer here. It has a little bit of salicylic acid in it which is really gonna help with these blemishes down here. So I'm gonna take that same brush I use for the peach color corrector and then I'm just going to lightly layer it over top. By the time this video is going up, I would have already gotten a facial. I plan on getting a lot of these blemishes or pimples or closed white heads, whatever you wanna call it, extracted by my next video. So hopefully I can get that scheduled and they can get that taken care of because honey, as a result of wearing a mask, my skin is just out of control. And these little textured bumps have been here since like March and I have no idea how to get rid of them. I feel like everything I've tried has not worked. So I'm definitely gonna try to get them extracted within the coming days. Let's move on to foundation. The foundation you guys all wanted me to use in my last haul was this one right here by Too Faced. This is their brand new foundation. It is the Born This Way Matte. It says it is 24 hour undetectable, super long wear foundation. And it also claims to be transfer resistant. I do have mine in the shade Late Beige. So we'll see how this works out for me. I'm gonna pump some on the back. It also has a pump. So it's very, very similar to the original Too Faced Born This Way, but it's just a lot slimmer. I'm gonna take my sponge by e.l.f. and I'm gonna pick up some of that foundation and just start patting it all over. You guys know how much I love the Too Faced Born This Way foundation, so when I saw that they were launching this, I was just over the moon. I was so excited. So I just wanna take a little mini break really quick. This side, I have the foundation on. This side, I do not. Like the coverage is so crazy. I'm loving this so far, you guys. It definitely is a mattifying foundation, but it's not overly matte in the sense where I feel like my skin is very, very dry. I feel like it's matte enough. Also, the coverage is just crazy. I know I've said it a bunch of times already, but I'm just, over the moon impressed with how well it's covering up my color corrector and just all of my other blemishes. Like you can't even see my sunspots really peeking through. And that's, that's a big thing. Anyways, besides that, let's move on to under eye concealer. You guys saw that I also picked this up. This is by Catrice. This is the Slimatic Camouflage Concealer Stick. And I picked mine up in the shade Light Beige. I'm gonna use this underneath my eyes. It is more of like a crayon creamy concealer. So I'm just going to use a little bit of this under here. It's not too light, but it's also not the same shade as my skin tone. I do have another shade here, which is a little bit lighter, so I may even mix the two. This one here is in Fair. I picked this up before quarantine and I realized it was super light, but now that I have another shade, I could easily just mix. This concealer does claim to be waterproof, so we'll see how it holds up underneath my eyes. I'm gonna take that same sponge and blend it out. Ooh, I like how creamy this is. Like it's not drying underneath my eyes whatsoever. And usually when I think waterproof, I think of drying and I don't find that to be the case with this. Following that, I'm gonna go in with some of the Derma Blend Loose Setting Powder. Again, in translucent, I'm gonna take that sponge, dip it in and I'm just going to set the concealer so that way it doesn't crease on me. I'm also gonna go in with this Dermablend powder all over my nose because as you guys know, 
this is an area that tends to wear off the fastest whenever you're wearing a mask. So I'm gonna overly powder this area. And then for the rest of my face, I'm just gonna use this powder right here by Catrice. This is the Prime and Fine Mattifying Powder, and it is waterproof. I do really like this one. I feel like it works very, very well. So I'm gonna take a brush and then just lightly set the rest of my face. Now I'm gonna go in with that Tarte bronzer. I actually have quite a few face products from Tarte, mainly because a lot of their line is waterproof and long wearing and stuff like that. So we're really gonna put it to the test. This is the Park Avenue Princess Face and Body Bronzer. I'm gonna use the number 96 brush by Sephora Collection and I'm gonna bronze up the skin because the Lord knows we need some color. Okay, now I do know that this bronzer is a cult favorite. I don't think I've used it in the past. And if I have, I can't remember how I felt about it. Wow, I'm like, oh, she's bronze, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna try not to create a bronzer helmet. Actually, this has a little bit of a sheen to it. I'm kind of into that. Okay, let's not go too crazy right here on the cheeks. I definitely wanna go in with blush because I feel like it's really gonna elevate this look. So I have this blush palette right here by Tarte. This is the Tartus Clay Blush Palette. It is a part of their Amazonian Clay Blush line. So if you have any of the singles, those will work very, very well as well. So I'm actually gonna mix a little bit of this hot pink in with the mauve. So I'm gonna do a cocktail, smile, and just pop it onto my cheeks. Ooh, this is cute. That is gorgeous. Now, I'm not entirely sure if I want to go in with highlight. Should I? I'm gonna take some of this blush and actually put it on my nose for a really cute blush of color. Before I go in with highlight, I am going to spray my face down a little bit with the e.l.f. Matte Magic Mist and Set. I'm gonna give it a good shake though because I have heard horror stories about matte setting sprays. I heard it can really mess up your makeup and that's not what I'm going for. So I'm gonna give it a good shake. A good shake. <laughs> and then... All right, now that that's dried down a little bit, I'm gonna go into the Tarte. What is this? This is the Skin Twinkle Volume 2 Highlighting Palette. Now, I am aware that they do have a waterproof highlighter. I wasn't gonna buy it though because I already have this in my collection and I'm a cheap ass, so I figured why buy a Tarte highlighter when I already have one in this palette. So I'm just gonna take this and put it right here. These definitely aren't as blinding as I would like, but It'll work for this video. All right, we are money, honey. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish off my lower lash line and with the power of editing, my lower lash line is done. To finish off with the lips, I'm gonna use the Lip Whip by Beauty Bakery. This one is in the shade I like to chai chai. And this is so beautiful. All right, so this is the makeup zoomed out. Honestly, I'm digging the vibe. I really love how everything turned out. I do have to get my hair done here in a little bit. So what's great about it is that I do have to wear a mask the entire time I'm getting my hair done. So the mask is gonna be pushed against my face. And we're gonna see if in fact this foundation is transfer resistant. It does claim to be, so we'll see. I'll touch base with you guys in a little bit as I'm getting my hair done vlog style on my phone. So I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. So you guys, I'm currently outside of the hair salon. As you can see, I have my mask on. The mask is pretty big, so it's not like super tight up against my face, which is something I like. Um, by the way, I did get this mask at Target and it wasn't that expensive at all. It also has like an adjustable nose thing. I do have to wear a mask the whole time I'm getting my hair done. So that should be very interesting as far as like how well my nose makeup stays on, but I'll keep you guys updated. I'll probably talk to you guys after I get my hair done just because it's going to be pretty hard to wear the mask and get my hair done and vlog. So I would talk to you guys when I'm done. All right, you guys, a little outfit change. I felt like my other top was gonna get messed up when I was getting my hair done, so I decided to just put on something a little simpler, but I'm done getting my hair done. As you can see, I just did a refresh. I also got rid of my money piece in the front because it was a little too out there, but nonetheless, I'm really happy with how everything turned out. Let's get on into the makeup. As you can see, my lips look a little worn in, and that's simply because I had to wear a mask the whole time I was getting my hair done. So as I'm talking, my foundation is getting on the mask, 
and the mask is rubbing over my lips, which now have foundation on it. So I do have a little bit of foundation on my lips. My biggest tip is probably to go in with some kind of lip tint because I could touch this up, but it can get a little crusty. I personally feel like when you go in with a liquid lip and you're constantly building it up, it starts to cake up and get crusty and it kind of starts to crumble. So I definitely wouldn't touch up this lip color. It's on there though. Like honestly, it's not going anywhere, but I do have some foundation kind of just like creeping on there and it's not the prettiest sight. I also want to zoom you guys in. So hold on one second. Hello, good zoom. Um, I zoomed you guys in because I want you guys to really see what this foundation looks like on my skin. It kind of wore a little bit around my mouth. It definitely wore on my nose, but not as much as I thought it would. I feel like because we took the extra steps of priming with a mattifying primer and then setting it with a loose powder and then going in with foundation and really sealing the deal, it didn't rub off as quickly or as much as I thought it would considering I was wearing a mask for maybe about five hours plus. So I'm really happy with that. I also noticed like right here where I have these textured bumps, it did kind of wear off. Honestly, it kind of wore the most around my mouth because that's where my mask was sitting. But on my cheeks and stuff, it still looks very, very good. And I think the foundation held up very, very nicely. Do I think it's transfer resistant when wearing a mask? No, I wish I had my mask in front of me to show you, but there there's makeup all up in that thing. So it's definitely not transfer resistant, but it holds up really nice. So I definitely encourage you guys to go out and try out these products for yourself. And if you guys like any of them, let me know if I missed any long proof, waterproof, long wearing makeup products, leave them down below in the comments. And of course, let me know what other videos you guys wanna see next week. So that way I can put those up for you guys. I love you. Thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, I'll be sure to catch you guys all on the next one. Deuces.